So you come to watch the UFO? Well, you must be very popular with the girl. All right, all jokes aside, it is time for another random U4, your favorite U4 series. Let's face it. Let's see what the random button is going to give us today. Booyah, Schnackadowski. Right, well, it looks like the English are on the table today. So we got three options on the Wheel of Destiny. We have to either go British Isles only challenge, which means abandoned the European holdings and let's say try and get 20 dev in each British province by 1530 or so. Second is form Texas, abandon the old world completely and form the strongest formable nation in the new world. And third option is get 100 dev in London by 1500. And to make this one a little bit more spicy, we also have to start as a bankrupt nation to make it a bit more difficult and an actual challenge. So let's see which one we're gonna get today. Clicky clicky spinny wheelie and the answer is British Isles only I think yes that looks like it's gonna be our challenge for today fair enough Let's do it, boys. So to start this off, we obviously got to get rid of our provinces and uh, the uh, French lands. Before we do that, we're going to lower the autonomy here and we're going to be exploiting the development in all of these provinces to get the manpower out of there that we need. And after we've exploited the dev, we're going to be unstating all of these lands and we're going to be concentrating them as well. This way we get a bit more development in London, standard deleting of all the fortifications in the mainland. And we're also going to be selling these provinces so we're gonna sell Maine over to the uh, nation of Provence because it's right next to them anything is fine 45 ducats more than enough same goes for the uh, Bretons we're selling them Cotentin 42 ducats not bad and we're selling Alençon to the French we also need to do our estate so we're gonna give out the plus one mana privilege obviously for this run in particular this is absolutely vital since we really desperately need mana points as well as give out the advisor cost reduction privileges and get the advisors with the highest mana mana points so here that would be John Fortescue because we can upgrade this bad boy to level 3 and he's super cheap we might even put him up to level 5 after we get some money because we start with the 0 0 0 leader this challenge might be the worst one I've had so far I've exploited the tax dev in the uh, Welsh lands because I plan on making all of these Welsh provinces English this is strategic because I don't want any rebellions in these areas so by making them all English they're happy okay they just have their fish and chips and no complaints that's it maybe some tea on the side and of course we can also sell titles and seize crownlands right after meaning that we start with eight percent crownlands not bad overall hey we can even get the advisor cost reduction that would be pretty nice since uh we're gonna need to have pretty high skilled advisors for this run in particular so we still need a little bit more manpower to do this mission which means that we're gonna have to exploit more of our manpower and since i'm such a generous soul i'm gonna be selling laborde to navara this way navara Navarra is not an insignificant nation anymore and it actually has two starting provinces now because of all this selling of provinces I got a lot of prestige on the minus so let's give out the uh, prestige uh, privilege here meaning we start with just a minus six prestige rather than you know a lot less we still have three provinces to get rid of though so there's that I'm gonna get my alliances with the Castilians first off and with the Austrians for that matter I don't mind getting an alliance with as well I have one more diplo slot so let's say Brandenburg for no real reason except because I, I like Brandenburg. I'm a Brandenburg boo. Okay, that's that's the truth right there. And I also gave France Alençon because I knew they would release the province of uh, Alençon as a vassal, which kind of is a bit of a debuff for them because now they're gonna have a little bit more uh, liberty desire in their subjects. So if they're not sure how to keep them in check, they might break apart. Let's see. You never know. All right, one month has passed, which means we can do our mission. Since after one month passes, our land force limit resets and it's lowered compared to the starting land force limit because we exploited our development and we also sold provinces so we lost five land force limit and we have above 60 percent manpower so we get all of these juicy claims and the uh, subjugation cb against the scots the scots start with a guarantee by the french which makes it pretty difficult to deal with them because we have to fight the french there's a workaround to this namely the alliances that the scots get right now that's Tyconal and ulster so i can just attack ulster cancel their alliance if they get one with the French. Let's go with the uh, attack on Leinster first since they didn't get any alliances. And then every one month I get a new attack on whatever Irish nations I can. That is basically an easy pickings. Die ya Leinster boosters. There's no potatoes in the pail. Aren't potatoes from the New World actually? I don't think there was any potatoes in Ireland at this point. <laughs> Alright, target number two is uh, kill 
Bear and Tyrone. All right, let's go with these boyos. Bring the rest of the army to the pale. Thank you very much. Next target on the list is Sligo with Ormond because they're right next to my army. So we can just drop these guys behind and uh, attack them in Sligo after. And Thomon does not have any alliances. So Thomon should be fairly easy. Same goes for Clan Ricard and Munster. So far, at least they didn't get any alliances. Hopefully they don't ally each other. Now we need to wait for all of these sieges to finish here before we continue with the rest of the wars and with the war against the Scots, of course. The Scottish war is going to be the big main uh, war. And I also need to get rid of these four provinces. I haven't forgotten. Don't worry. I'll do it after I finish conquering the Irish lands. I know it's part of the challenge. I know. Let's also build a flagship to help us out with our trade exploits. We're going to give it trade power per ship and fleet. Fleet movement speed, of course, and privateer efficiency. We would not be English if we didn't have privateer efficiency, would we? So many wars. I absolutely love the Irish. Slowly, however, they do dissipate in the annals of time, don't they? Oh, lol, France attacked Navarra for the reconquest of uh, La Purdi. La Purdi, that's what they call it. Oh, I would attack them as well if they called it La Purdi. Oh, this is bad. Please tell me that's not gonna stop the progress. Yes, it will. Schnaps. Now I gotta disinherit this dude. Again, losing 50 prestige. Feels bad, man. I'm doing this obviously because I want the uh, War of the Roses to trigger so I get rid of this uh, 000 leader. But that means whatever air I get doesn't matter. I have to kill it so I can get the Civil War trigger. So we finally have a little bit of uh, peacetime, which means we can continue to sell provinces. I'm gonna sell these right now to uh, the Bretonians because I don't want them to go to the French. That's that's why I'm doing it. Plus, look at this. Bretonians are giving me 80 ducats for this. Holy snaps, man. That's a lot of money, yo. Only 24 ducats for coal because I'm guessing they're out of money, but still worth it. Better than having it go to French hands, at least. The problem is that I cannot sell Bordeaux to anyone because both the French and the uh, nation and Navarra here are at war with each other. So I got to wait until they finish their war. But I have to do my own war in the north here. So um, mine takes priority, of course. Actually, I can sell Bordeaux to the uh, Bretonians for nothing. And I'm going to do that. <laughs> Let's make Brittany great again, shall we? And the true reason why I did that is not because, uh, you know, I want to make Brittany great again. It's because this way I lost the minus 200 relations I had with the French. So because I sold the province of Bordeaux and I don't have minus 200 relations with the French anymore, it means that they're not going to help out the Scots if I attack them, which also means that I can just directly declare my war against everybody here and finish them off without having to worry about the French intervening. Hey, the civil war just started, boyos. So we can choose a 601 or a 442. I think I'm going to go for the 442. Boom, minus uh, 4,000 manpower as if I had any. <laughs> and look at this now, boys. 1295 instead of uh, what like five was something that we had before eight five I just realized I also have Calais. I don't want to give Calais because it's my staple port It's my beautiful Calais, right? But um, <laughs> I know I have to give it away. It's part of the challenge I'll do it just after this war. Okay, give, let me just get used to the fact that I don't have Calais no more My beloved Calais looks like we can do the mission conquest of Iceland I mean Ireland that offers goods produced plus 35 in all of these provinces not bad Definitely a pretty good boost right here and looks like we can fight the Scots. Oh, they ran away. Never mind We can fight them here. Stop running away you Scottish bastards. You know what? I'll let them fight my uh, rebels in that case if they're so keen on going in the south Whilst I basically just carpet siege their country as expected my rebels spawned in the capital Crushing the entirety of the Scottish army in the process. Absolutely beautiful right here. Absolutely beautiful Also courtesy of the fact that the uh, Scottish noble rebels spawned and uh, occupied most of the provinces already that essentially boosted these provinces to 10 autonomy so because of that increase in autonomy i can fully annex scotland now which means that their vassal of uh, the isles becomes my vassal as consequence and i don't even need to vassalize them i already own all of the british isles well with the exception of the norwegian parts that i'm gonna get eventually after my war with the danes conquest of scotland is done as well beautiful 150 admin power absolutely amazing and claim on the uh, Norwegian provinces and looks like we can do another mission in Gain a permanent claim on Jabal Tariq. Oh, 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 that is 
really good. That is really great. That's essentially a claim on Granada, my boys. The problem is that because we did take all of Scotland, <laughs> I didn't realize it, but I actually managed to get a little bit of a coalition in the process. 51 aggressive expansion. I mean, it's on the limit, right? If I waited for two more months, I would not even have this coalition, but I guess I, I didn't really pay attention. Also, we can designate Calais the staple port, getting some mercantilism and uh, losing some admin points in the process. And because of the uh, quick wars that I've had, I uh, I have no manpower and I only have 12,000 units left. But all of these units here will become my units once the Pretender enforces. And that's exactly why I am letting the Pretender enforce. Because even if the new leader is a little bit worse mana points wise, we get his army and that means we get up to maximum land force limit. 32,000 units and we can use that new army to attack the Danes afterwards and get the rest of the British Isles. It's basically free units boys. Free freaking units. Alright boys, looks like uh, the Pretenders enforced. We got one stability as consequence and we have a 231 a new leader from the House of uh, York. Oh god, <laughs> we have too many leaders now. We gotta get rid of some of these boys. Um, You can go Jacob Hastings. And we have 50 prestige on the minus. Not a big deal though, considering we now actually Actually have an army and we can start doing a little bit of uh, damage 36,000 units right there there you go we did lose a little bit of mana from our leadership obviously so we're gonna have to make up for that by getting better higher skilled advisors so that means promote the advisors of course we can make uh, Henry Tudor here our heir and that's gonna give us another one stability so that's actually not that bad of an idea if you really don't want to keep him you can always just disinherit the dude once you have zero prestige but honestly in my case 342 is not bad at all i actually don't mind killing my leader so let's make him into a general and uh, hope that he's gonna die so that the heir takes charge of the country we can also do the war of the roses now that gives some uh, aggressive expansion impact reduction we're gonna take advantage of the situation and sell titles again and seize them afterwards ending up with 14.9 but we will start developing our country as well now so so we're gonna get a lot of crownlands from developing provinces too and of course we're gonna be assigning our trade fleet in the English Channel node now and we're gonna have one of our armies suppress the rebels all the way into Wales Cornwall Ireland and Scotland it's extremely important that we lower the autonomy in the provinces we just conquered after we've made them full states and yes it's basically rebel town when it comes to the Irish lands now they keep rebelling every five seconds at this point look there you go another rebellion in uh, what is this former Desmond I think come on boys you can kill him you don't need to chill like that over there please do your job that's why I hired you in the first place I want to see if I can actually do something here I'm gonna set these provinces as my vital interest provinces and I'm gonna attack Granada and I'm not actually gonna go there physically I'm just gonna let the uh, Castilians and the Portuguese do all the work for me and just hope that I get my war score from them and that the Castilians honor the agreement of vital interest and they give me the provinces and don't take them for themselves hey you know what they actually are honoring the agreement and they're giving this stuff to me wow i did not expect that but i'm happy to see it though nope i take it back they're keeping some of these provinces Forty-nine thousand units in this one province of ceuta why would they not send their entire army there am i right hey we got the last jousting tournament that's pretty good that's gonna help us out with uh, winning battles not that we're actually fighting ourselves we're letting our proxy war over here do all the work for us oh my god i just realized Am I the United States in the Middle Ages letting other countries fight my wars for me? Oh, I love this game. I love it. I love the roleplay aspect of it. I don't know why I'm getting the sudden urge of attacking countries with oil. Pew, 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 pew. Hot diggity dog, the parliament just gave us one stability. This is one of the reasons why in single player, I personally think that having the parliament makes some amazing playthroughs because it can be so varied and can give some really specific bonuses whenever you need them. I could go for these technologies now and I could even get some innovativeness, but I'm actually going to do something else first. I'm going to be uh, getting the indebted to the burgers guild loans so I can adopt the renaissance and get this for a little bit less mana points. This way, since this 
cheaper, I save up some of my mana points in the process as well. If my challenge would have been to go for the new world, I would have just vassalized Granada now because uh, luckily Castile actually offered me the uh, capital of Granada, so that means I can vassalize them. There you go, giving all of this stuff away, making sure that these guys never bother my Castilian broskies ever again. And I gave Castile a foothold in Africa, so there you go. Who is the best ally? Let me hear it. It's me, exactly. You better not backstab me, Castile. You better have my back for this in the future. Looks like we can also get a new air. 344. Um, yeah, sure. 344 is not so bad, actually. Wait, what? My Brandenburg's a junior member of Volgast? No. <laughs> no freaking way this actually happened. Are you serious right now? I feel like it's my own personal duty to fight for the independence of Brandenburg, okay? I have to do it. I believe we need to reclaim our island, sir. Let's go with the uh, first of these islands here. I think we can also get all the way into Iceland. Yeah, I might as well get all of these islands here. This way we maybe even can go into the New World afterwards if we want to continue this run in the future via the North Atlantic rather than going through the South. Part one of this war is obviously just crushing all of the fleets of this uh, enemy alliance and we've basically done that so far. We even managed to capture quite a few of these ships, which is great because it means we don't need to build our own ships essentially. Free ships are always good ships. Second phase obviously is landing in Volgast so we can cancel their union over my beloved Brandenburg since Volgast is an ally to the Danes and as such they're in my war. And whilst we're at it we can also peace out Friesland which is another one of the allies of Denmark. Don't really want to go for too much uh, from the Frisians. I will likely attack them in the future again but I just want to get them out of the war so I can uh, peace out my Danes. And phase three is taking over the capital of the Danes so I can enforce whatever demands I want from them. Hey, looks like Castile just uh, declared war on Naples. They want to get back their personal union apparently. And let's also kill off the Danish fleet before we make our peace deal. Dariago, no more ships for you, sir. So I'm taking the islands plus as much money as I possibly can take from the Danes. This was meant to be a short war and it was a fairly short war overall because we do have naval supremacy over the uh, seas in Europe. Nobody can actually challenge us, especially now since we have the entirety of the British Isles, including the islands around here. So all that's left to do now is basically play tall and develop the schnapps out of our provinces. So we've unlocked all of the economic ideas now and we're close to getting the uh, quantity ideas. Obviously in order to play tall you need to have both of these so you can get the uh, quantity economic policy that offers an extra 10% dev cost reduction. Until we get the other one we'll have to make do with this and we'll just have to develop provinces for 20 mana points instead of five for now at least and we'll be saving up our mill points of course oh dude we got so freaking lucky minus 10 dev cost reduction from the diet oh that is beautiful right there man i'm gonna i'm gonna get this really quick now so i can actually start developing my provinces like crazy so because we've essentially ignored the mainland of europe look at what happened here the french got massive they got the union over over Burgundy manually they literally manually went ahead and they got that freaking union. Did not even wait for Charles, nothing of the sorts. And they also killed off Savoy and now they're trying to kill off Milan. It's insane how strong they raffle stomped everybody. Super freaking fast. It's the French Blitzkrieg everybody. But hey, you know what? We managed to unlock both of our playing tall ideas now. And that means we got the minus 10 dev cost reduction from the policy of those ideas. And as such, we're developing provinces for roughly a around 10 to 15 mana points per dev click. So now is when the fun begins, boys. And by starting our golden era, we get another minus 10% all power cost. So again, it's 10% even cheaper to develop provinces. Uh, I've also kind of been uh, converting to English, basically everybody in the British Isles. I know, I know. I don't need to do it. It's a waste of mana points, but I like to. I like to get rid of everybody else. No rebellions. Hey, we got that going for us. And look at that. Lothian only five minutes mana points to develop even though it's already been developed twice and booyah shaka boyos we got radical reforms 200 of each mana points and we don't want to get rid of our advisors especially the juicy level 5 advisor that's ridiculously cheap so i'm gonna fire them temporarily and after i fire them get this event and then i'm just gonna hire them back because that's essentially how you cheese that event and protestantism just triggered that means we're gonna be able to get anglicanism 
mechanism soon. You know what, since I'm not really doing right now too much, I'm gonna be declaring a quick war against the Bretons. I'm not really gonna take any lands from them because obviously that would be against the rules of this session, but I am gonna be uh, taking a little bit uh, of trade power from them and maybe some other things. I need a bit of extra prestige, so I might as well use them to get that prestige, right? Nobody said I cannot do some small little wars. Nobody said that. I want to barrage the fort in Nante, but that is 43 mana points and considering my challenge I really need to conserve all of my military mana especially and use it to dev up so I'm not gonna do it I'm just gonna wait now let's start marching towards Utrecht since we want them to transfer their trade power to Mwah. oh what did we encounter on the way some uh, Britain brigands give me that juicy trade power Utrecht and also cancel your rival to get me that juicy prestige as well oh I'm itching to fully annex Brittany it's not doable instead what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna make them uh, cancel rivals and all that trade power there you go not gonna pillage because they don't give me any dev if i do pillage it was a pleasure doing business with you Brittany. also let's uh get our next idea set of course it is going to be exploration ideas since we want to establish ourselves in the new world as well apparently sweden also wants me to support their independence let's make the swedes a proper nation and not just another danish province full disclaimer this bad joke was sponsored by the danish government in this run we're simply going to be forming great britain we're not forming ireland first to get the irish ideas i've done that in my previous run you guys probably saw that if you haven't already check it out you'll find a link to it in the description but yeah today is just plain old uh, britain let's uh, go ahead and uh, adopt the new traditions and ambitions of the great british nation look at this bad boy here we got discipline tech cost reduction settler increase diplomatic station and governing capacity modifier as well as goods produced plus 20 percent and a ton of marines 50 percent marines and navy traditions definitely a very naval focused uh, set of national ideas plus now we have an extended mission tree look at all these new beautiful missions here that we can get let's go with the North Sea Islands we get permanent claims on the Greenland area that's pretty good one of the biggest decisions we ever have to make in uh, England's future is whether we're gonna go for the emphasis on the Royal Army or the Admiralty basically either get army tradition or Navy tradition I'm gonna go for the army tradition simply because naval tradition is fairly easy to get whilst army tradition is quite a little bit more difficult especially for us since we don't have as many wars as the main continental nations have and look at our explorers go in the early 16th century a little bit late to the colonial game i guess we're just going full-on historical here since the english were quite late compared to the other nations to the new world but we are seeing what's happening here and it looks like the portuguese already established themselves we are choosing the native repression policy but we're only doing that to role play the english okay only for role playing purposes oh my god we just discovered an entire continent to the west of the great ocean how about we colonize this bad boy and filter in all the trade in the english channel how does that sound boys hey what does this button do attack the natives oh oh did we just kill all the natives oh i didn't mean to click that button we're deving deving away deving deving away i should do a remix out of this avalon the great has been established we're gonna use avalon to start working our way towards the caribbean though and the southern parts which is where all the juicy money is coming from it is time for the english people to establish their own religion the english religion let's just say it's called anglican okay found a new state church abuya schnakadoski and anglican has just appeared we will be the defender of anglican people so uh we'll be the defender of our country i guess that that's kind of a little bit weird to say the best part is that anglican is a really great playing toll religion and a unique religion to the english or british you get minus 10 dev cost reduction and innovativeness plus 50 percent gain and we can do the control state religion mission now as well realistically speaking anglican is not the best religion out there that's for sure but the fact that we can guarantee to have defender of the faith always because nobody else is going to be anglican and because we also are doing the playing toll challenge here 
it kind of makes it a little bit worth it. It's honestly quite fascinating. I've been developing provinces like crazy, and it's still seven mana points to develop most of the provinces. If you're curious about why exactly it's that much, look at all these modifiers here that really just absolutely add up, making it super cheap to develop provinces. And this is a coastline, for example, in Cornwall. It's not even a farmland. It's not even a great province to be developed. So let's uh, go ahead and dev this up. Let's say 20 dev, like we are meant to have. So now the entire west region has 20 development we can change this up now to protect trade and our second colony is done right next to the mexican lands here strategically done of course because mexico is going to be our main primary target in the new world we have it on pretty good authority that's where all the money is coming from surprisingly the spanish did not colonize panama so we're going to take advantage and colonize it ourselves because we all know panama is a super important province in the new world it definitely took a while but we did eventually eventually managed to get 20 development minimum in every single one of our provinces. Some of these even went up to 35 development. But the idea is that now, even though we only have the British Isles provinces as well as a couple of provinces around the world here and there for colonial purposes which we're not putting into the equation here okay we're just counting the british isle provinces because of developing those british isle provinces we made the english channel the richest channel in the world 50.5 ducats mostly from these juicy provinces in the south over here the second richest after us is the genoese node with 35 so you can really tell the difference is massive and guess what? Once we start bringing more trade from the new world, it's gonna scale up massively. We already are bringing 11 ducats from the new world via the uh, North Sea, but we just started that. And we're talking about hundreds and thousands of ducats from this trade node by the 1650s. I was supposed to get the 20 development in each province quite a while earlier though, so... um. I kind of failed this run, but I did decide to see how long it would take me to eventually get that 20 dev in each province. So 1546 is not so bad overall, considering I've had really trash leaders. But hey, now we're getting 52 ducats on the profit with a total of 155 income. And once we unlock many factories, it's gonna ramp up massively. If you enjoyed this video, check out this awesome Oirats video until the next time. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 